Which map do you think is the worst map? If you said anything, I mean anything, but Power Trip, you're wrong. Power Trip is the literal trash of Fall Guys, the worst example of what Fall Guys is about. The game is basically a coin flip, and I've played Power Trip before with three AFK teammates, and it's not fun. Next is Hoarders, not just because it's bad, but because it was literally removed from main show, and the only way to get it now is in squads. Overall though, it is a really hard mode to carry your teammates in, but it was sort of fun with all the chaos, but since it was removed, there's no point in ranking it high because it's rarely played anymore. And also, I want to rank Egg Siege right next to it because of the same reason. Although it is slightly easier to carry your teammates in, but again, it was removed from main show. Now, which finale do you think is the worst? Well, for me, it's definitely Fall Mountain. Honestly, Lost Temple is RNG with how the door is open, but at least it's easier to win consistently if you have the skill to navigate through the obstacles. But with Fall Mountain, once you're starting to reach the top, the balls literally fall down like rain, and if you get hit even one time, it's basically over. Next is the other team game from Season 4, and that's Basketball. It's not as bad as Power Trip, because in this mode you can at least make a little bit of a difference depending on your skill, but still, 80% of it is luck if you get good teammates or not. Next is Perfect Match, and this mode is super boring. Boring. Just say the fruits out loud and you can't forget them. Or if you're even lazier, don't even remember the fruits. Just follow the other people, which works like 90% of the time. However, this ranking does not include perfect deathmatch. That's for later. And right after perfect match, we have some fruit, the other fruit memorizing game. This one is a slight bit more fun, mostly because it's harder and a lot more people die compared to perfect match, but still, it sucks. Next is fall ball, and I'm ranking this one low because it's hard to carry your teammates. Although Although it is a slight bit easier than the last team games I ranked, but if your teammates suck, they aren't gonna score any goals either. And right after Fall Ball, another team game. Egg Scramble, this one is a bit more fun because I like the fact that you can defend or take eggs out of other people's baskets, making it slightly more bearable. And yet, another team game is next, which is Rock and Roll. This one is pretty easy if you know which way to push the balls, and even if your team sucks and they can't push the ball for anything, you can always grief the other team instead. Next is Hoopsie Dance because it's another team game where you aren't able to carry your team. And for our first race mode, we have Hoverboard Heroes. And the reason it's the lowest ranking race mode is because it's not even a race. It's literally just sitting on a platform, moving slightly left and right until the very last second, then it's a race to see who can reach the flipper first. From now on, here is where we get to the okay map section. The maps where if I get them, I don't mind, but they aren't the best. And to start us off, we have Full Tilt. And honestly, when this map was first first released, I thought it was amazing, but after a while, it's just another boring version of Seesaw. And speaking of Seesaw, that's the next map on the list. Seesaw is really really annoying, especially from the people who think it's a good idea to jump on a Seesaw when it's already fully tipped. And after Seesaw, we have Jump Club, and Jump Club is an alright map, it's fun with the 3 pull variation, but any other time with a 2 or 1 pull, it's still pretty boring. And on top of that, the fruit sometimes will eliminate me in the stupidest ways, which can be very annoying. Next is Freezy Peak. Now, I absolutely love Freezy Peak, but there is a reason I'm ranking it this low. There was a skip on the map where you could go on top of the boxing gloves, but when I tried it recently, it turns out that Mediatonic decided to patch it. Now you can't get up there anymore, and every time I get Freezy Peak, all I can think about is the fact that they removed the skip. Next, we have Night Fever, one of the more boring race modes. There isn't really anything bad with this level. It's a straightforward map that's just an extra three minutes before any of the good rounds show up. And after Night Fever, we have Treetop Tumble, and this mode is low for the same reason as Night Fever. There's nothing too special, however, it's ranked slightly higher because of the fact that there are two cute elephants at the end of the game. Alright, now we're getting into the good maps. These maps, I like playing them, and they are somewhat enjoyable. And to start us off is Short Circuit. I like the fact that it was the first race mode with two laps, kind of like Mario Kart. Also, the obstacles are made pretty well, and overall this map is pretty good. Next is Royal Fumble. Now you might be wondering why I ranked Royal Fumble so high. Well, that's because I rarely played it. I haven't played Royal Fumble in months, except for yesterday I got it and I won. So me and Royal Fumble are temporary friends. I still would prefer it every other final level. Next, the 1v1 mode, Button Bashers. This mode was the first of its kind, so it's unique, 
unique, it's fun. This mode would be so much better if the servers weren't heavily ping based. If you go up against a good player and they live closer to the servers than you do, good luck beating them because it is very hard. Now let's talk about the map that I used to hate and that's Big Shots. When Big Shots first came out, I liked it, but as people got better and better at the map, the waiting for it to be over got longer and longer to the point where the map would go a full five minutes before timing out. However, the reason I like it now is because Mediatonic changed the timer down to one minute and 30 seconds, so you don't have to wait that long anymore. But speaking of one minute and 30 seconds, we have one of the hardest games ever, Snowball Survival. Now when playing main show Snowball Survival only lasts a minute and it's pretty easy and I like it. But when you play this map on hard mode, it goes up to one minute and 30 seconds and it's extremely hard to beat. Next is Pipe Dream. It's an okay map, but most of the obstacles are very annoying, like the water balloons and the seesaws and the orange frogs aren't even an obstacle. Next, we have Gate Crash. And I like Gate Crash. The mode is very fast and easy to complete, but there aren't any good obstacles. It's literally just waiting for a gate to come down and the ending is really easy once you learn how to time it right. Next is DoorDash. And this mode would be much, much higher on the list if Mediatonic hadn't ruined it. You used to be able to tell the last four sets of doors if they were real or not. You could tell by looking at their teeth. And then they decided to patch it, making all doors the same. And then you used to be able to use the door pieces to jump over a set of doors. And then they patched that, making the pieces disappear after one second. Honestly, it's a shame that they patched it and that's why it's so low. And now for the good maps. These maps I really like. Starting us off is Bubble Trouble. I like Bubble Trouble a lot because not many people know the strategies for getting the golden bubbles. So for me, it's very easy to get them and qualify. Next is a map that I haven't gotten in like a year and that's Snowy Scrap. This mode was very fun and I liked it a lot, but sadly, it's like this mode is now extinct. Next is another mode that's gone extinct and that's Penguin Pursuit. Although I have gotten this map two or three times in the past year, which makes it so rare to the point that getting it makes the game feel like they added this as a new map and you're playing it again for the first time. And now we have Jinx. This map is pretty fun, but I do have a question for you. Have you ever been the player to start out as Jinx? Because me, I've only got it once and that's after a year and a half of playing. Next is Thin Ice. This kind of finale is boring because there's no real action until you already cut the first two layers and then half of the third layer. I mean, it's sort of fun at the end, but the two first minutes are boring. Next is Hoopsie Legends. And this mode is way better than Hoopsie Daisy because you don't have to rely on teammates and the hoops are very easy to get. Next is the second Penguin mode, Penguin Pool Party. I like this one more because it's not a team game and because if you get a Penguin, you can just go over to the slide and qualify very easily. Roll On is a pretty good race mode. The gameplay is very simple. However, there was a very big problem with how long it took people to complete this mode. I don't know why, but usually this mode will only have like 30 people qualify and it used to take forever to wait for the round to time out. But thankfully, Mediatonic recently changed the timer to be only two minutes and 30 seconds long, which is a big relief. Next is Leading Light. Not much to say about this. It's basically a moving air time and the mode is really fun, but sometimes it is frustrating when the light goes up high and it's hard for you to get up. Tiptoe. This mode is very average. I mean, it's the same thing every single time. Everyone in the beginning falls off trying to find the first half of the path. And then for finding the tiles close to the finish line, everyone just pushes each other off as sacrifices. And then in the last two seconds of the mode, everyone shoves each other off trying to qualify. Next, we have Hip Raid, a very fast mode. It's usually done within a minute. The obstacles are great and the slime at the beginning is very useful as well. And the hammers at the end are also a great addition. Next is Party Promenade, the way that all race modes should be. It doesn't last too long. The obstacles are fun. There isn't that much desync, so playing is very smooth and overall just a good map. And now here's where we get to the great maps and starting us off is Skyline Stumble. I love this mode because it's very easy to learn the shortcuts. For example, the pinball flippers at the end, all you have to do is learn how to time your jump correctly and you get sent flying. Next is Dizzy Heights. And I like Dizzy Heights a lot because of the beginning. If you know which path to take, you're gonna be way ahead of most players and only maybe one or two people are gonna be competing against you for first. Next is Airtime. I like this map because of how easy it is I can complete it in like 30 seconds using the seesaw trapeze strategy. And then I'll just go on my phone for the next two minutes while the other people try and qualify themselves. Next is Rollout. This map is pretty fun. I love the griefing capabilities. It's pretty hard to lose unless you get overconfident in trying to grief. But mainly the only thing I do on this map is try and raise my kill record for the round. 
Currently, it's seven. Next is wall guys, and I like this mode a lot because of how unique it is. You actually have to climb your way up to the finish, and it's actually somewhat of a challenge with the people moving the blocks and all that, and sometimes people are even willing to work together. Next we have is Lost Temple, and now I know I used to complain a lot about Lost Temple saying that it was trash and it's luck, but recently I've been winning it much more consistently. This next map everyone hates, but I love, Stomping Ground. Now this map is really easy, there used to be a glitch where the rhinos would only detect you if you moved, but then Mediatonic patched it. But still, I love the map because a lot of people die on it, but I qualify about 80% of the time, so as long as I keep focus, I'll have a pretty easy time qualifying. Next is Tundra Run, and I think this mode might be the one with the most variations in the game. The reason this map never gets old is because of the variations, and if all Fall Guys maps were like this, the game would definitely be way more popular. Next is Ski Fall, and I love this map so much because it's fun to travel really really fast, as well as qualifying is pretty easy. Fruit Shoot is a very fun mode and if I were ranking this map in season 1 it would be much much lower but ever since they added the Yeetus it makes the game way more fun. Just time the Yeetus right and you guaranteed qualify. Next is Whirligig and I love this map because it's been fun ever since the beginning of Fall Guys. Every part of it's amazing, there are many parts in which skill will help you get first place and overall nothing is wrong. And for the same reasons Lily Leapers is next. I love Lily Leapers because skill helps you win and you get to move at the speed of sound at the beginning section making it slightly better than the whirly gig. Now we're getting to the top eight, the peak of Fall Guys, and the first one is Block Party. Now I know Block Party sucks and I hate it too, but when they added the variations with the new blocks that you can climb on, it makes the map harder and actually made the map good. And I would rank this in the top three maps, but there are times when I get this map and there are no new variations, making it boring. Next at number seven, we have Big Fans. This map is so fun. So many skips, such as jumping over the middle of the fan, the check point strategy as well you can get on the candle at the end and that's a big plus at number six we have slime scraper not one of the most fun modes but i enjoy it because it's pretty easy and it eliminates so many people you could go literally from 40 down to six in one round and even some people have managed to win off of slime scraper because they're the only ones to qualify starting off the top five is slime climb the og slime mode although slightly easier than slime scraper we can all remember the memories of when you first got this map and you die in the first two seconds and then you got better to the point where you get to watch other people get eliminated in the first two seconds. At number four we have our third best finale roll off. This mode is very good because it rarely goes to a timeout making the game more intense. The griefing is also really fun and the intense moments when the cylinders are going at a thousand miles per hour are what make this mode an amazing time. At number three we have perfect deathmatch. Just like the slime modes it eliminates a lot of people and it's really hard to qualify on. But this map would literally rank first on my list if it appeared more frequently. I literally haven't seen it in months. And for the second best map in Fall Guys, we have Hexagon, the OG Fall Guys map. If you say the words Fall Guys, then this is the map that comes to mind. It's not a unique idea, but was executed so well. I remember playing Fall Guys just in the hopes for getting Hexagon, that's how good it was. And now for the best map of all time, Jump Showdown. I don't know anyone who hates Jump Showdown. The mode is very fun, you still start out slow and then you get to introduce yourself to the other players by grabbing them and then as the game goes faster and faster people start flying off and then eventually someone wins or you can get the best type of jump showdown where you meet a peaceful good player and you both get to time the round out. Honestly I don't have a bad memory with jump showdown and that's why it's the best map in Fall Guys.